All right, you ready? Nice. I am now. Yeah. Keep that in. <laughs> yes. Hi, and welcome back to the best thing you watched this week. Got Chris from Movies and Munchies, myself, Ruben from the Ruby Tuesday. It's been an interesting week for me. It's been a week of cold. My son went away for five days, came back after spending 10 minutes of the rain in the rain, chasing a pigeon, came back with a heady <laughs> cold, gave it to me. Oh, no. So if I, if I sound a little bit more nasally this time and, and you're getting a bit more ASMR, sorry uh <laughs> then you exactly then you'll know why <laughs> but i think we have an eclectic content of what we're going to be talking about whether it what it is the best thing that we watched at the same time your audio exclusive we do have an interesting film a nissan film to talk about uh which i'm sure is an, an amazing film and we'll be gushing all about that that's in the audio exclusive content bit with the things that we're looking forward to and some entertainment news so it really is a fun experience there as well so wherever you listen to audio stuff uh audio podcasts we're probably on that platform and then this week's patreon is the last american extravaganza of me tasting sweets and and chris giving me uh, diabetes once more uh that is a new video that'll be on there thank you so much for our new patrons that are joining us we are very excited yes. to have you there with us. We have an eclectic tier list of things to, you can get us to do, whether it's doing <laughs> short skits or it is uh, reviewing series or movies or even just a little bit of fun information. Or even if you want to join us on one, there are tiers that you can check from like really cheap to God mode Nicolas Cage. So <laughs> uh, you can check that out in the descriptions below. Chris wants to uh, say something. You, uh, I I think Ruben's been going rogue someplace. I heard we're doing skits. Yeah. <laughs> that that's a <laughs> uh, Okay. Well, there you go. If you need, <laughs> if that's what you <laughs> You want us news to, do to it. me, but okay, I'm doing it. Yep. <laughs> you obviously haven't checked all the tears out. I apparently have not. Oh goodness, I'm falling behind. <laughs> There's going to be behind. sneaky ones oh. there with like little subtitles and Chris will do this if you ask him really yeah. nicely. Chris <laughs> shaves the center of his beard. <laughs> <laughs> yes i'll do like just no. a, a buzz cut straight down the middle <laughs> so bad <laughs> anyway we oh, should man. start hi chris yes hi reuben <laughs> oh goodness uh well i'm sorry to hear that uh that you had the head cold a little mm. bit uh it is funny though that your son was chasing birds out in the rain well, so the pigeon couldn't fly because it was so heavily raining so he was chasing it and then allowing it to run away some more because it couldn't fly away and then he would catch up and he spent 10 minutes doing that. And I say to him, well, who won? The pigeon won because you came back with a, a cold and infected the rest of your family. Thank you very much. Rats with wings right there. Yep. Oh yeah, shit with feet, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I've never heard that one before. Uh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Like, oh, well, hey, so to do something different this week, Ruben typically gives us a movie quote quiz and I ask a question. Hmm? We're doing it different this week. I'm going to give the movie quote quiz ah, and ah. Ruben is going to ask the question. But first, we did get a winner from mm -hmm. last week. Um, Leah Wilkie Donnelly. Hey. Got Holy Grail, Con Air, and The Martian. So, and I only got Con Air because of Ruben's visual hint of him <laughs> moving his fingers forward and back a la Nicolas Cage. At this point, I do need to apologize to the audio listeners. I am, uh, every, every week I listen back, and I know Chris does as well, and there are moments when I go, I really need to do more visual audio description because we're laughing and what you're listening to in the audio has no meaning whatsoever and i'm just i'm so sorry so if you're listening i'm going to be more descriptive like if i'm doing something silly ruben has now picked his nose i will describe it for you in nice squishy detail uh, <laughs> squishy even yes. better <laughs> yeah but chris uh so cool. you're doing the movie <clears throat> quote quiz excellent i am i'm super excited by this okay okay okay, okay. are you ready I, I'm, I'm, yes. Okay. Bring it on. Okay. 
Here's the first one. Okay. Let's chow down here and munch on some grindage. Wow. Is that a 90s film? Yes. Yes. Uh, really, I'm thinking Skater Dude. Uh, I think I might have the film. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good. Okay. Good one. I, I like the Grindage. Yeah, that's kind of gave me the, the hands. Nice. Okay. All right. Cool. Okay. Number two. Dude, if you get the nacho stuck together, that's one nacho. <laughs> what the hell? I don't know what that is, but it's brilliant. No, oh, it doesn't ring oh. a bell. I mean, unless <laughs> it's like... Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. It was funny. I was doing these for my family last night, and and my wife got the first two. She actually even finished the second one for oh, me. Oh, wow. <laughs> she, she, nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my youngest son hadn't seen that movie, so he was like, that sounds familiar. And I'm he's list, you know, I'm listening to all the uh, the actor names, and he's like, no, Who I don't know. I haven't seen that. Yeah. Okay. So. so that gives me an idea that it's from the Stone Age. <clears throat> okay. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, <laughs> wow. Early in the morning for Chris and is already getting beat up. Okay. The third one, this is harder. All so right. the, the the first two are, are well, this is mainstream still. It's it's mainstream right. movie. But this business will get out of control. It will get out of control and we'll be lucky to live through it. Hmm. Okay, I have an idea, but I don't know if I'm right. All right. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> tricky. I, I think I have the first one. I have an idea on the second one. Could guess at the third one. Let us nice. know in the comments. This is trickier. And also, if it's too hard, I, don't worry. I can come back next week. <laughs> yeah. right, we can fight, Chris. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> there have been some obscure ones yeah, that you've pulled yeah, out. Yeah, so yeah, let's no, just... I'm, I'm playing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Chris only because I'm on the other week. side now. And I don't like it. <laughs> I have to guess and use my brain. This is terrible. Oh. You don't have the answers now, right? <laughs> yeah, that's not fair. I'll need to consult the cards. Oh, <laughs> oh awesome. Okay. So, okay, you so, have a question? Yes, I do have a question. Okay, so I have to set the scene for this this okay. this question because Ribbon likes a story. You know, that's but all sure. storytellers like writers you just have to live if you live with them you probably feel sorry for your the partners that live with storytellers here we go in the real world there is a server farm that uh houses a hundred of the world's it might be a thousand a thousand of the world's films because there are places in the world that house seeds like seed vaults just in case there's an apocalypse things that mm. we want to protect uh, now, so this actually exists today. There are server farms where they want to house and protect what they consider to be probably a hundred, maybe not a thousand of the, the world's best films considered to be art. Mm. Now let's surmise that. There is an algorithm, an AI intelligence that uh, it's about to jump forward on its programming. It's it's basically mutated into something that it shouldn't be. And with the forward slash in this server farm, this server farm now houses all the world's sequels and all the world's remakes. With the forward slash, it will delete all the remakes. With the backslash, it will delete all the world's sequels. So you have to choose one. It's going to go forward anyway. Forward slash or backslash? Remakes or sequels? Which do you choose? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, um, my gut instantly goes with remakes because I'm trying to figure out or to get rid of that. To, to, you want to get rid of have the, it do the remakes. remakes. Yeah. Okay. Cool, yeah. Cool. Because I'm trying to. Have there been any remakes that are better? Oh, some. Yeah, no, some I think. So let me, let me put this, is there are some yeah. that you don't know that are remakes. For example, The Thing, 1982, is a remake of a 1952 original film. <sighs> but then, on the other side, Terminator 2. 
Back to the Future yeah. 2. <clears throat> I mean, all sequels. So it's not just number twos, it's sequels. So we're talking it's, Harry Potter, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're talking uh, Rambo, two, three, four. F- we're talking Rocky, two, three, four, five, six. We're talking Star Wars. <laughs> Star hey. Wars. Indiana Jones. Speed 2. Oh my gosh. What a great film. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, oh, crap. Hmm. <clears throat> let us know in the comments what but, you would choose yes yes because see here the, uh, hmm. okay going to the thing mm. it, it, no matter what i choose something of the thing goes away right because either the original well if i choose the remakes <laughs> the whole the whole everything goes away if i only choose the sequels just the um the prequel which is really what it is goes away right <clears throat> that's horrible I'm still going to go pr- I'm still going to go remakes goes away. Right. I uh, because I think there are too many good sequels mm. versus remakes. I think we'll just yeah, that that sucks. What a terrible question. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? What do you choose? No, I don't play. Oh no, 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 no. You have to answer. <laughs> I, I push both. <laughs> I don't Equal know. doom. <laughs> Eeny, <laughs> meeny, miny. No, I definitely would choose to delete the remakes. I have a special <clears throat> fondness of hate for remakes. <clears throat> How many times have we had the conversation of wh- why? why? How many times have you seen an original, like Infernal Affairs, one of the greatest uh, films ever, has an amazing trilogy, and then America comes along. And The Departed is a good film, but if you've seen the original, until you've seen Inferno Affairs, don't come and talk to me. You just jock on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's so many like that. Royal um, uh, Battle Royale, the remake of oh, that was atrocious. Yeah. Like, don't- oh, I didn't see the remake of that. It's horrible, but Battle Royale is, is, is amazing. It's so good. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so no, yeah, that's my answer. Let you, you guys let us know in the comments what you would do. There are no wrong answers except one. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. I like switching it up. That's fun. Yeah, it's good. That's, uh, cool. Uh, okay. um, should we should we jump in as to what is so, the yes. best thing you watched this week? Okay, I'll let you start because yeah. I just remembered I watched something that I really wanted to talk about. Um, oh. But I forgot the title that bodes well for it yeah my brain okay, is well, mushy well for me i'm gonna kick it off the this is something i actually watched last week but it just started coming out wide release this week okay and it's the movie that i went in absolutely blind for i had not seen a trailer i had not read a description or a synopsis i had only seen the movie poster and it's the movie called bones and all with taylor russell Mm. timothy chalamet yeah, it's and just mark out, rylance yeah okay yeah it just came out here also this like wide it, it was in new york and la i think the first week when i actually saw it um I, don't worry i am not going to talk about the plot at all okay um <clears throat> because just on the off chance that you don't know about it mm. uh and you mm. want to go in completely blind i'm not sure that's the right choice but that's the choice i did so anyway <laughs> the the acting is I, for me, I was sucked in with it. It is a quiet, slower type of story where uh, two aspects, kind of. One is this young girl who is basically just, she's searching for her mother, her birth mother, but she's also kind of trying to find herself and her place in the world. And then there's a romance angle that that runs along parallel and complements that. Now, this is, I would classify this as a romantic horror. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, it's not, don't don't think slasher horror or right. even scary horror. It's not that type of thing. It's more of that um, acting, that horror. visual type of um, just, it's visceral. Oh. And it's, um, okay. it's I have disturbing. no idea what this movie is about. Uh, good. Go in <laughs> okay. that way. Okay. My son actually, so my son was sitting next to me. He went to the screening with me Mm. and um, he had seen the trailer already. 
So there's a point in the trailer that begins to show something and your brain will figure out what the rest of the context is, I think, based on the whole trailer. Mm. But he at this point, it comes into the movie and the setup is different than what the execution actually becomes. (coughs) Oh, that's interesting. And so he's watching me because I'm watching it. I'm like. (laughs) <laughs> just for everybody on the audio, I mean, it was just a shock. Yeah, I mean, I, I go back, my mouth kind of drops open, my eyes get big because mm. it's it's just so not what I thought was going to happen. And that then sets the rest of the trajectory. And this happens fairly early in the movie. Mm. So it's um, it, it's not going to be for everybody. Right. Um, you know, I, it is definitely, it's an artsier film. It's from... Um, the director and I can't say his last name, Luca Gua Gua the Nino Nino Gua something. Nice. Um, he 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 did uh, the Suspiria remake. He did uh, Call Me by Your Name with um, Timothy Chalamet. Hmm. So it's he has a visual style to it, which is great. I mean, the film is beautiful. Uh, it's haunting. Um, I think really the standout in this movie is Mark Rylance. Okay. The man not who I thought you were going to say is terrifying. Um in a very <laughs> um nonchalant way, like hmm. very approachable way, menace, I think maybe is a better word for it. He just there's something about him that will put your teeth on edge. <laughs> and it That's is nicely descriptive teeth on edge. Yeah. So I had to, I literally had to sit with it for um, almost a week. What, of to how did I feel? You, yeah. Okay. To, yeah, to know yeah. if you liked it or not. Yeah. I well, really did because like my kids would come in and they would be like, So what'd you think? I don't know yet. <laughs> I'm still processing it. I don't know. <laughs> nice. But yeah. Yeah. I ended up uh, loving it though. So. Okay. What, how many couches did you give it in the end? Uh, f- four or four and a half. Oh, okay, so strong, really high up there. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. really was. It was. A, I mean, it's a, it's one of those haunting movies that just sticks with you for a while, and I like that. Cinema you know, experience. I don't know how well. Streaming experience. Um, um, I don't. Um, from a visual standpoint, I think probably cinema, just because it's uh, some of it is just really beautiful, and you want something bigger. Mm. Um, you 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 need to be invested in it you need to be watching it um mm. not because there's stuff that i don't know it i think i think you could do either way and and not miss out on it um mm. and you may need to take a break for a moment so okay. maybe maybe watching at home could be a better better option at times but it's a question you know. that a fellow you've met him john he always says yeah. Is this an experience that you he, he calls the like the audience the the, the punter mm. such a British term <laughs> like can you like is this worth them spending their ten quid on for the experience uh, at the cinema do they need to go out and do this um, or can they wait but at the same time when you get early releases at home it's often more expensive like i was looking at some of the oh yeah the stuff the home premieres as they as they call them and those are anywhere from uh, 1599 that's pounds to like 20 well 1999 so that's what's mm-hmm. that's about 23 24 dollars your your side mm-hmm. for and that's probably two cinema tickets i guess yeah yeah so yeah so if i if i had more than two people watching mm. then it it becomes a better deal if home, you're both but paying. if it's just yeah 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 exactly mm. so okay so yeah. t- but you didn't speak much about timothy is, is is he good in this he's good he's kind of himself uh okay um i mean there was nothing there's nothing wrong with his performance by any means i mean he's he's enveloping i mean he's mm. i i i'm invested in him just like taylor russell i mean she's outstanding in this too yeah. um it's just he <sighs> I think about some of the other Timothy Chalamet movies that I've watched, even Dune, mm. and he kind of has the same thing going on okay. in there. So it's not, I mean, it's not 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 a knock to him, but it's just kind of like, I don't know, you're good, you're fine, yeah, but not like like drop everything and you are the absolute reason to go and see this. Okay, nice. Yeah. 
Um, should I jump into my thing? Please do, yes. Okay. A group of old friends reunites for a nostalgic evening of fun and games after a decade apart. After one too many, as in drinks, they decide to play a drinking game. But it's quickly revealed that the games that this game comes with supernatural stakes. Mischief leads to mayhem, and the group realize that if they can't come together to win the game by sunrise, they will be forced to play for eternity in hell. Do you know what this is? No. I mean, it started off sounding like, um, well, I don't know what it would. I mean, no, I don't know. What is it? <laughs> so how would I describe this? Um, any escape room sort of film mixed okay. in with, with Jumanji. Yeah. Uh, so it's called, a, it's, it's apparently it came out in June, but it's just dropped on Amazon, at least in the UK. It's huh. called Gatlop. Hell of a game. And it's Gatlop. It's Gatlop. <laughs> yeah. Is it, 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 is it English? Yeah, no, it's English. It's an, it's an American film. Um, so the actors in it, you got Emmy Revere Lampman. You were recognize her from a bunch of other stuff. Uh, Jim Mahoney, uh, John Bass, who's pretty good in it. It's quite funny. Uh, directed by Alberto Belli, who I've never heard of. And I don't know. Yes. <laughs> never seen any of his stuff. But yeah, so this was a surprise. This was really good. It was really funny. It's exactly what I expected. It doesn't have a huge um, budget. So I think they use it wisely. It's mostly all in one location. And what you get is a it's, it's like a, a reunite, reuniting with the friends that were like really close knit and tight together. They spent all of their waking time. They were basically family to each other. Uh, except they've they've had baggage along the way. And so this guy is getting divorced one of the one of the main group and they come together and they they basically drink and play a board game to get him out of his current funk he's got to sign his divorce papers and one of the the roommates has bought this thing a crescenda a crescenda 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 like credenza. a credenza yeah that's not credenza. really a, yeah credenza and yeah. inside the credenza is <laughs> this <really> um, <laughs> yeah credenza credenza <laughs> inside the credenza is this board game mm. um which is called gatlop and so they they play it and well they start to play it until they realize like the cards are saying stuff that's relevant to their life or mm. and then suddenly the timer flips over by itself nobody touches it and they're like are we really that drunk <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then it takes a turn for the darks, the, the the darker, and they've got to play it to survive. Uh, there are moments in this where the story develops through flashbacks of when they have to answer a question, and if you don't answer truthfully, then something happens. Like you, you got to listen to the game of the question. If you don't answer truthfully, then something's going to happen. So Ooh. when they don't want to reveal to their best friends stuff that has happened in their past, mm. and you get to see it through a flashback. Um, then you know you're like, oh, what's gonna happen? And there, there, co the comedic moments. There's some real moments. It's a really nice, fun one-time watch. A film I'd never heard of, didn't know existed, just dropped out of nowhere. I went and looked on Rotten Tomatoes. It's got a fairly high Rotten Tomatoes score, like a, from critics and um, audience, where people both kind of liked it. I was like, how did this one even miss me by? This is definitely my type of film, like Game Night, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Jumanji, Zathura, all of that kind of stuff mixed in together. <laughs> Loved it. It was, it was really fun. So how did you how did you even come across this? Were you just it's like on skimming Amazon, through so Frank? skimming through Amazon and every yeah. week they refresh of like what's new to their platform mm -hmm. and I was like, Oh, that looks fun. Chuck that on, not really paying attention, and then within the first few minutes I was like, Oh, this could be good. Nice. Yeah. All right. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna check that out then. Check it that, out. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, she's uh, the the lead actress um, is actually in the movie that uh, you and I watched. Yes, which I thought was funny. Be... I was going to link yeah. back to that in our audio <laughs> bit when we were talking because yes. she's probably the best thing in the Neeson thing as well, I, I guess. She's the only yeah. character that I believe is what her character is meant to be in that film. <laughs> yes. 
Yes. <laughs> Anywho, uh, what's cool. next on your mm. best thing? Um, this one, it, it had been something I had been looking forward to, but was not really sure if the execution was going to be uh, just done well. Yeah. And it dropped uh, t- Tuesday, I think. Maybe it dropped Wednesday, which would be appropriate because it no, is it dropped Wednesday. Wednesday if it's Wednesday. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. is Wednesday. Yes. Yes. Tim Burton's Wednesday. He directed the first four episodes. It's eight episodes total. Jenna Ortega. Um, I, I had a blast with it. It's kind of a noir mystery. Um, it's snarky and sarcastic, which we would expect. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I loved, I think probably one of the things that I liked the best about this was that when it started to get teen angsty, Wednesday would come in and kill that. Yeah. And so it never, <laughs> like never it would hit really, you that. Yeah. It starts <laughs> to get it and she's just like, I'm not doing that. Nope. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, what'd you think? Did you? Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I do think there was a bit of Wednesday being the unlikable character, so much so that she could have been autistic or uh, on a spectrum. Um, mm. I think like it took a long time for them to go, oh, this character is learning something, because she did need to learn. There was a progression yep. that of her character. She, she needed to learn not to just trust in herself and trust in other people. That's fine. Mm-hmm. I think I would have liked that to occur a little bit earlier rather than the last episode where she realizes, oh, oh it's not just me. I need to trust in others. I think sure. she comes off as a bit unlikable in parts. That's not mm-hmm. to say she didn't execute um, Wednesday perfectly because she's brilliant in this. Had she not had characters like Thing, um, Hands, what? Yes. The Hand? Yeah, thing. Thing, yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Uh, I think she would have been even more unlikable because the way she re- relates, the thing brings a levity. It's often quite funny. Um, she has a few friends that call her up on it. I think that was good. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just say, you, you're you just, you know, you don't trust anybody. I, I've been on your in your corner the whole time. That sort of moments, I thought those were really good. The twist I thought were really good as well because it kept pointing at people and you kept guessing and I was like, it's definitely this person, it's definitely this person. They were, there is a person that I knew that definitely had to have something to do with the big arc because otherwise you, mm. it's one of those, if you're watching a TV episode of a weekly drama and you see a person's name, you're like, well, they it's them because th- you wouldn't get hired otherwise, right? Mm. So I knew from that perspective, but there was still mystery enough for me to go, yeah, I didn't quite guess all of what was going to happen or how they were going to get there. It was funny. I, like in the very first episode, I told my wife, I was like, I'm going to be pissed if it's this person. <laughs> and it was and this person. It was that person. Yeah. But <clears throat> in episode six, I actually paused it for a second. And my wife and I looked at each other and we were both like, mm, no, I think it's this person now. <laughs> and so, so there, there was, was a n- substitute. <laughs> Yeah, there was a little bit of doubt that was created there. And then as the, you know, then through six, seven and eight, I did flip flop back and forth. And so mm. I liked that even though I had guessed it, I mm. hadn't guessed all of it. Yeah. And so that was, you know what I mean? And it wasn't the mystery was not so deep that I that I was broken up about being able to, you know, really by the end of the series, because I became invested in the characters. For sure. Um, I really her, enjoyed her, her. Yeah, I was going to say her roommate, the, yeah. the juxtaposition, so obviously created on purpose. They would <laughs> yes. just do that. You know, her world is beautiful rainbows, and which is a juxtaposition in, in itself when you consider that she's a family of werewolves. Like, yeah. how does she even end up like that? It's great. And might be my second favorite character on the show just because of her mm-hmm. flamboyancy. And then and the window coloring, you know, the rainbows, yeah. the, the black and white and, and, and Wednesday just having wearing black and white, mostly black. <laughs> Very monotone. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was good. I, I thought it was it was engaging enough. You know, it moved along. I was actually surprised at how long the episodes were. I didn't hmm. realize that they were like an hour each and which I didn't mind. I mean, I no. I, like I no, was enjoying I was, them and I was, I was sad when it finished so that like I could have had more because I was enjoying it. The world. Exactly. Yes. Yes. I think the best thing for me, uh, 
and I think this comes down to Tim Burton, is that every character I felt like had their own story. You, they, you didn't need mm. to be told their story, but I felt yeah. like if you went and sat down and had a coffee with them, they would have a very great detailed backstory. It just felt like a very realized world. So much so that I equated it to a year in Harry Potter, you know, going to school there, mm -hmm. all those characters, you know, yeah. especially once in your like third or fourth film, you know, you know them. They all have their own backstory, especially if you read the books. And I felt like that, which is really clever. If you consider this is the first year, we yeah. essentially know nothing about them, but the world, the sets, everything gives you, Everything gives that idea of there's much more going on. Uh, and then the little bits that we do get from characters that we just hear an over conversation if Wednesday's walking past or she will stop to listen, but then go, that's not ready for me or I don't care and move, move on. <laughs> then uh, can I just say thing on the edge of the bed with his fingers as hands, like just like la, 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 swinging them like a kid was brilliant. Correct me. It, it, well, and it did. You're right because the thing added a, a softness mm. to the Wednesday character that that I think she needed. You yeah. know, because yeah, because she could because she's so cold and stoic a lot of the time, or matter of fact, yeah. she could become very unlikable very quickly. Um, but then he's there to kind of bridge, or it's there, I guess, really to to mm. to bridge to bridge that that emotional gap. The only character I wasn't mm. sure on. Uh, was Uncle Fester. I just, I didn't know what to make of him. It was almost too slapstick. Uh, I guess he was, he's similar to that in the films for sure. But this one, I just didn't know what to do with him. I didn't know where he f really fitted in. I think he was more a fan service. That's what mm -hmm. it felt like. Yeah. Because, you know, he comes on in the middle and then he just kind of disappears. Yeah. And then he's done. After yeah. that. And yeah. So and what so was the point of you? <laughs> I, yeah, really. I mean, for one, you can have fans. Yeah, no, no, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, I don't think he was necessary, but that also goes like with, um, I mean, even Morticia and Gomez, for sure. You know, and, yeah. and Pugsley. I mean, they were barely in it, which is fine. Yeah. I, I'm not complaining about that at all. Because it's called Wednesday. This is, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, we didn't want that to be overshadowed. I mean, I think Luis Guzman was. <laughs> I mean, them together, him and Catherine Zeta Jones, and and. Wednesday's disgust and disdain at her parents, like constantly making out, I thought was great. I thought that was really funny. And, you know, it, it reminiscent of like a teenage reaction. Yeah. If your parents were, were overly emotive like that. Yeah. Cause they totally in love. They, they're all over each other all the time. And the time. it makes, I mean, literally all the time, uh, so much so that they said that they hadn't spent a day apart since they were married and so if they if that had to happen they would totally fall apart and you kind of saw that happening when a, a, a bit in the storyline and i thought i thought it was a nice bit to make us like the characters put mm -hmm. the adams family really in perspective as to what's happening in wednesday's life still have them feel like they're a part of the series but be off like yeah. to the side they're still there but this is wednesday's story very very mm -hmm. well done yeah agreed Agreed. I'm I'm looking forward to more. I hope yes. there will be more. Yeah. It'll be interesting though to see where they go because if they continue down like this noirish mystery angle, mm. will they be able to create another engaging mystery that that feels like it like it belongs? Mm. Yeah, I, I do right. wonder about that. I hope they keep to the formula of a school year. I think it could mm -hmm. be very cool, like with the Harry Potter. Then, then we yeah. we have the, their own Scooby Gang, which is now kind of part of, and she's going to have to have to learn to deal with them, allow them to help her as they mm -hmm. start progressing. Uh, one of the reasons I say that that the second character is my favorite is because of her progression throughout the arc was almost more emotional to me than Wednesday's one. So you have the interesting relationship with her parents. Then that moment towards the last couple of last episode where she has a thing that happens to her mm -hmm. and then the <clears throat> emotional impact of that, I thought was really well done. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yep. Agreed. Oh, cool. So moving on. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm actually going to talk about a game. <coughs> so okay. 
most people, if they hear a game and they think, ah, oh, I know what R- R- Rupin was moaning about not being able to play Ragnarok because he was in America and he didn't get to play it. And it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually going to talk about a vampire game. It's Ooh. called Evil West. I'll show you the cover um, and the description for those on audio. It's an it's a it's a cowboy dude. It's set in the West. That's hence the title. Uh, I'll read the description. A dark menace consumes the American frontier. As one of the last agents in a top secret vampire hunting institute, you are the final line between humanity and deep rooted terror that now embraces sorry, embraces, emerges from the shadows. Rise up to become a Wild West superhero. Eradicate the vampire threat and save the United States. Includes the Wild West. Eat skin pack. Yeah, the skin pack was cool. Get that, everybody. (laughs) Um, So this is nice because it's not another open world game. It's linear. Uh, So you go to different set locations and you beat the hordes of bad guys in that. What's great about the vampires in this one is they feel more like something akin to vampires that would be written by um cthulhu uh what do you call them lovecraftian lovecraft really lovecraftian (laughs) vampires yeah like a lot of these vampires have tentacles there's lots of like werewolf hybrids there's flying eyeballs it's a very lovecraftian vampire story set in the west you have your your gauntlet that's like filled with electricity so you're like doing heavy punches and the executions Mm. of that is they will explode at the end (laughs) nice Um, and then you have your various weapons that are like darts shotguns uh, and every single upgrade feels earned Uh, the reason why you're collecting gold is to upgrade your weapons which has real world effects and as do you surviving it's also not easy i Went in and read the description of the normal difficulty and went, yeah, that's me. I'm a, I'm a normal. This is how the, mm-hmm. the, the the devs intended you to play. Third mission in, dying like 20 times. It's like, hell no, I didn't sign up for another <laughs> Dark Souls game. Uh, hit that easy mode, still spent another nine times defeating a boss. So, you oh, know, wow. yeah, uh, I... I I am ashamedly still playing on easy, still dying, <laughs> but loving it. It's so much fun. And the story is just classic. You you are the hero. You're gruff. Uh, you have to save your dad. Your dad's infected. He's one of the army dudes. You don't have a good relationship with mm-hmm. your dad. The, the wider uh, Americas are trying to hold back the scourge, not really knowing what's going on down your end of the world. Uh, they think they can just punch a button and everything will be fine. Uh, you still there? Hello? Hello. Okay. I think we lost the internet there. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I just stopped talking because you froze and then I realized it might be me. So um, <laughs> I'll carry on. Yes. So you were talking about just how the um, like the, the scourge, America's holding back the scourge. Yeah, okay, really so sure you where. get sent <laughs> out to, th- there's one particular vampire or a vampires, young one that is like messing up things for you. And you get sent mm. to various locations in, in this world, collecting things. There is a particular weapon that can help, I guess, lower the playing field, because at the moment you're just totally outnumbered. They, they're, there are hordes and hordes of them. Your weapons mm. are average at best, even though you're upgrading them. So between you, a doctor, and a like a geeky scientist, you have to go out and like defeat them and collect these things. So you have anywhere nice. between arriving at a mission, discovering a few things, beating a bunch of guys, going in a cart and shooting things like a little roller coaster, <laughs> like the, like a little mini games in between, which is really fun. Oh, that's cool. Uh, rewarding the player for collecting loot boxes and going off mm. path, walking backwards. You know, first thing you get taught as a gamer, as soon as you arrive, walk backwards because devs love to put things behind you because normally you don't actually explore enough as you should. That This game rewards that. The nice. characters themselves are cliche what you expect. Um, <laughs> maybe that's to its detriment, like... <clears throat> I, I'm mm. I'm I'm the I'm the Western gunslinger, bad guy, kind of Bruce Willis back in the '90s, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. But also, I'm not really smart, so I rely on this uh, Chinese dude who's the smart scientist, but can't be strong. It's very like caricatures <sighs> of these um, 
I guess they wanted them really well defined uh, in that way, as in the, the, I guess, old school definition of what the West would be, which makes okay. more sense. Um, okay. So that it, it, it's fun. You you were the hero. Is it? Is it? I saw you, yours. Yours is PS Five. Is it? Is it a PS Five exclusive? I don't or think is so. it. I think it's on multiple consoles. Okay. Um, it's Focus Entertainment. I don't think it's an exclusive. Yeah, it's on PC and uh, everywhere. Evil nice. West video game. Let's see. Yeah, it's definitely on Steam. Okay. Here we go. PS5, PS4, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, Series oh, wow. S, Microsoft Windows. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's been getting surprisingly good reviews because normally, nice. no matter what type of game it is, people will hate on it. But so far, <laughs> this is a lot more fun. I think people were craving a linear story game. So you mm. can go to places, do a thing, hear the story, be the, the hero, A to B, vampires are bad they're trying to suck your blood and mutate across the earth you know simple linear story rather than here's a 200 hour open world game go and explore yeah. i like those but sometimes you just want to be in the last <laughs> of us or you know <laughs> oh that's cool i'm gonna have to tell my oldest about this because he first off he loves uh just the lovecraft mm. type of visuals and everything and he uh, like dark souls is one of his favorite games so yeah. uh, you well know, he's gonna love a this game for him to it's not quit. as hard as dark souls but it gets up there especially if you're chucking up the other levels <laughs> what i loved about this it doesn't get the hordes of monsters you fight don't get old because the, of the variations that every mm. new section is just like a variation on those monsters so you'll get the nice. monsters you fought but then they'll add another three different ones and then just when you thought you've gotten on top of how to beat those they chuck in a couple of others and then you've got to beat them all together so when you're Ooh. fighting a mini boss in level one thinking well that was tough six levels in you're fighting three of those mini bosses going yeah you're easy because the guy i'm fighting now that is the size of a mountain with like six eyeballs and you're like cool, 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 cool. great fun. nice hmm. oh very cool sweet all right um so i saw a movie uh early yesterday uh congratulations paid to go see it. yeah well you know hey <laughs> no it's a um week one week release in theaters which i don't understand because i think if it had like a proper theatrical release it would actually do fairly well okay but it's coming to netflix at the end of the year mm. and it's glass onion a knives out mystery mm. and so we have the return of benoit blanc with a whole new cast of characters and um the I, I really can't wait for you to watch this because afterwards we were talking about it in the car and there's a a moment in it that at least from our memory feels like a giant hole huh. like in the story okay so but <clears throat> outside of that this is i don't think it's as good as the first one but it's still a really good mystery. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, it's it. There's a lot more comedy in it, hmm. but it doesn't feel like slapsticky comedy or out of place. It's more of uh, situational, maybe, or just circumstantial. And so, because it's kind of almost matter of fact, like you're like, oh my gosh, that's really funny. Yeah. Um, you know. So we have. I mean, there's a big cast of characters. Yeah. That. Massive ensemble we, cast again. Exactly. Yeah, they do. Um, you were talking about like caricatures of people, and th mm. that's what you get in this. Right. Which it actually works for the story, even though it's a little. I mean, it's a little on the nose at points. Mm. Um, but that's okay because it then creates these personas of people that you either don't like and you're not supposed to like, or you're laughing at them because they need to be laughed at. Mm. Um, so the it. it I think you'll feel the time a little bit because it goes through, like it takes us through the mystery and then about halfway through, it looks at the mystery from the different angle and then it f begins to fill us in up until a point that it had gone back, if that mm. makes sense. Like you know, yeah. we reach a point, you know, and then, and then once it reaches that point, then the movie continues on. And so there's, while it does move along efficiently, I think there's a little bit there 
that you might go, oh wow, okay, this is this is starting to feel some of the time. Yeah. Um, but but as far as a mystery goes, it's I think it's pretty good. Um, you know, Daniel Craig. Still, I want to see just more of him in this. I, I would I will continue to watch if they do. If Ryan Johnson will create more uh, stories for Benoit Blanc, I will watch them because he's just it's he's entertaining you know he's um definitely the best part of the movie i think his character yeah he is he's, he's actually i'm not sure he's the best part of this movie right um okay. i did i didn't know one of the actors that was going to be in there and he turned out to be probably the best part because it was just unexpected i hmm. think um so the first film, I wasn't sold in it, mostly because I was sold so much on the hype train. When I eventually got to see it, oh. I thought it was actually just an average mystery. I'd figured out the, the, like the ending well into, mm. like, this is the first third of the movie. I was like, yeah, I know exactly what this is. Um, and having just come off of mysteries like um, Detective Poirot, um, oh, those, yeah. Yeah. you know, those for me are, are really tight-knitted mysteries so uh, although i love the ensemble cast i didn't i didn't buy into the the hype that everybody th- was saying that this is like one okay. of the greatest of all time as it is all right oh. I, i'm not yeah. rushing back to go and watch it anytime soon i don't think i've seen it since so i, I probably will do knowing that this one is coming out although I, I don't think it plays a part that's not connected in any way they're separate stories aren't so you don't even need to do that really you could come into this one never seeing the first one mm. other than well and actually yeah you don't even need to see the first one because uh benoit blanc is he's introduced to us but he's also then given some context yeah. outside of that and you just okay. you you just know he's the detective i mean yeah. that's really all it is so yeah so i'm i would be going into this with um trepidation i guess i also asked for the screen and netflix said no so I, I will watch it when it comes out. Hmm, that's uh, weird. Yeah. It, yeah. I, I think what I think if like for you. OK, so you weren't wholly sold on the first one, especially from the mystery angle, mm. um, because I don't think this is as good as like Agatha Christie. I mean, yeah. that woman is a genius. genius. Yeah. Um, But this would be the what that you watch because of the cast and right. because of their interactions more than. More than the mystery angle, I think. I think that's yeah. fun as well because the ensemble cast, you want to see what they do with the characters that they're given. So often it's not necessarily the mystery that you get to the end. That was It's the journey of getting to the end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Nice. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've gotten to this. Well, I'll, sp- I'll, sp- I'll speak about the anime we watched. So I had a really interesting time i i think i mentioned to you when i was with you in america that there was this anime film one piece red that i really wanted oh, yeah, to yeah. see and i don't think we had time to go and watch mm, it so yeah. and also the context of me having watched a thousand episodes and you not having watched any would be really <laughs> weird <laughs> and i'm going look at that thing and look at that and you're like what <laughs> uh, so we went and watched it i took my two boys um, it happened to be in the biggest screen that they were showing it. Mm, uh, nice. We were the only people in the in the screen, so there were three of us. They had wow. pumped up the volume super loud, so way louder than my wife would ever let me uh, put it on at home. And in we went, and I was like, 20 minutes in, is this a musical? Because it kind of is. This is really famous uh the singer who i'd never heard of but uh in like anime culture or at least in japanese culture oda uh, oda uh who mm. is the i guess she's the if you listen to the score there's six or seven uh tracks and they're all mm. incredible various different types of music uh, she goes through an eclectic range but because the story revolves around a concert they're um and they're all there it makes sense to have all these numbers uh mm-hmm. so i didn't mind that at all and often the best part of the anime is the the music that goes in tangent with what's going on at screen there is a big number at the end there's a massive massive monster and uh you have one set of bad guys that are normally fighting the good guys 
except this time they've got to kind of work together to stop this massive evil, um, which is really clever. And in conjunction with the score from this um, musician or this Oda person, her song is atop that, that it's like the, the combination of the visual storytelling with her song. Man, we were just like pumped. We were like, yeah, let's do it. Nice. Come on. <laughs> <coughs> we came out on such a high. It was so good. I think for fans, this is like a love letter to fans. In mm. fact, I think they worded it like that. We're making this because we've reached the thousands episode. So we want to give you something. I don't, don't think it's canon, although there are three episodes that link to it. So they actually stopped their weekly episodes that they were doing in Japan for the release of this in the cinema for three weeks. And then I think there were three episodes that led into the storyline of mm. what happens here, which is great. But one of the good things about anime movies, especially for long running ones, is what they tend to do is bring in every character you've ever seen and then have them act at their max power and then just throw that at the screen. And you're just like, <laughs> so where <laughs> some of your characters have taken literally 10 to 12 seasons to reach a certain power level, you now see them just like at their max power level fighting things again. And it's just fun. Uh, it's been nice. the reason why there was nobody in the cinema. It's been out at, at cinemas already for like three weeks. So I realized mm. we were massively late. And if you're a fan, you probably would have seen it already. However, if you're just coming into One Piece and you're wondering, when can I watch this? You can watch it now, although it will spoil some things as to where the characters get in their power levels, like what they can mm. do. But because it's not canon, you can know maybe that'll encourage you like, oh, one day they're going to reach this level. Um there were some spoilers even for me because I'm not totally caught up in the Ooh. anime itself. And I was like, oh, that person? Okay, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> <laughs> but then I don't know because it's not canon. It's just, it's there. It's it's canon adjacent. <laughs> so it's still, it happened, <laughs> but it won't affect like the arc going forward. The characters will still do what they want. Highly recommend this. R really, really fun. Right on. That's cool that it was still playing in the big theater. Yeah, so glad. So that you could. Yeah. Cool. What's next on your list? I don't have anything else. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Short B. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds that sounds hesitant. <laughs> well, because I haven't finished it, and I said I would, but I, I haven't finished it yet because I just haven't had time. But it's. Mm. Very good. A Japanese Netflix series called First Love came out. Oh. Um, it's got nine episodes, which, which is nice because it's short. Uh, for, mm. for normally they do like 16 to 32. <laughs> this one's contained. It spans a 20-year period of, wow. of youngsters that meet at school. And mm -hmm. then through life, they kind of they break apart. And then later on, they meet up again. And it really is about first love, which is why it's titled First Love. The way they show that is often cliche, kind of like soft focus in some of the those moments. Oh. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but the the realistic way that you see the relationships progress, it's a slice of life, romantic drama mm. story. And so you start really off in the future. Well, modern day, which is the future. And they jump back to. Oh, okay like showing us what has happened, how they met, they, they progress it and build it that way and spend a long, like good chunks of time on that, which is great. But you also see their various friendships and their family. So there's the one protagonist has a sister who is deaf and they're so brave with how they do their sign language because they don't do like, they don't feel the need to add anything to it. It's just silent. And we've seen that work sometimes well, Chris, in, in films where, and mm. mostly that was like our favorite film that year or something when they just show what it's actually like. And I think that's really brave. And then you have another protagonist who has like an autistic uh, son who is dealing with life. And so you sh you really see how they deal with it, how they go to work, what they eat. You know, it is slice of life, 100%. And then our relationship forms in that. And it just, it felt nice. It was good. The, the, although there are dramatic things that happen in it, you are totally on board of these people you're willing them to get together and i was just like you know what this is nice like i need something that's not 
serial killer vibe. Netflix giving me <laughs> documentaries of how evil people are. And yeah, I was started watching Netflix documentaries even this week, like the Epstein case. And I was like, um, no, I don't need that in my life. I know people yeah. suck anyway. Like, and now you're just telling me they suck more. I don't need that. I'm going to watch this thing. And it turned out to be pretty damn good. So nice. I've still got a couple of episodes to watch. I'm not quite there yet, but it's, it's, I'm really enjoying it. Cool. That's cool. That's that's awesome that they're 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 showing like more accurate, I mm. guess, maybe, you know, even within a um fantastical type of world, you yeah, know, or at least a, a soft there, focus. There is and, a bit of over hyper like hyper realism, I mm. guess is what you call it. There's a couple of teenagers just in the first episode, so I'm not giving any spoilers. Uh, they in a video store. They're talking about the girl they like, or one kid is talking to his best friend, and they're giggling and loud, and it, it's not quite real. And then the video they pick up happens to be like softcore porn, and he takes it to the the counter, and it's the girl from school. And you're like, uh, and then she leans forward, and he's like, "Is this the one you wanted? The, the one with the butt stuff? And how long do you how long do you want it for?" And you're, you're, I'm just dying <laughs> for him. I'm like, no. Oh, oh awkward. <laughs> yeah, it's so awkward. Uh, yeah, for oh, audio, bloody. that's just me hiding underneath my shirt and shrinking down in my chair of embarrassment <laughs> for the dude. Yeah. <laughs> Serves him for being pervy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, oh, cool. All right. Anything else on your list? No, that's everything. Yeah. Okay. Well, hey, we thank you for joining us. Uh, don't forget, uh, there are many, many options, apparently, on our <laughs> Patreon, where Chris will dress up and dance around and shave half of his head, and, and Ruben will shave one of his eyebrows. Um, <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, for a few dollars a month, um, you can help support us. Um, not support us, but support, really, this production <laughs> that goes in there. Um, support my biscuit habit. Look. Exactly. Yes. Just a <laughs> ooh. Digestives. What are those? Are those the, oh digestive. Di McVitie's milk chocolate caramel digestives. Yeah. I don't know. What is a digestive? Um I can show you. I mean, because when I hear that is outstanding audio. <laughs> it's just a it's a cookie. Yeah. It's a well, chocolate on this side, yeah. there's caramel inside, and then biscuit on that side, see? But why do they call it a digestive? That like to me, that sounds like something like a probiotic. Yeah, that like does that have that connotation. Your... It helps me. It does. It helps my digestive system by me eating it. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Yes, well, <laughs> this. So does my Butterfinger candy bar. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, back. Back. <laughs> <laughs> went off on a tangent uh, there. Yes. No, that's OK. I love snacks. So I know. But uh, with our Patreon, you know, yes, for a few dollars a month, um, there are many opportunities and it just goes to help offset the cost of this production. Um, we thank you to the patrons that we have. If you want to check out more, definitely go on patreon.com slash the bearded ones to yep. see what we get up to there. Uh, you can always tweet at us at best. We watched. Also, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Uh, Ruben with the Ruby Tuesday. Me, Chris, with Movies and Munchies. And if you've never listened to the audio part, just, hey, head over to anywhere that you happen to listen to your audio podcasts and search for the best thing we watched this week. And we are on probably almost all of them. If just you do about. happen to listen to us, mm. yeah, good. yeah, there's a ton of them. Um, please rate and review us. That helps us out as well. And with that, hey, we'll see you next week. Take care. <laughs>